Eisenhower. Brought to you by the Elgin National Watch Company. Makers of Elgin Watches. The beautiful way to tell time. Wadsworth Watches. High in value, low in price. And Hadley Band. The perfect complement for any watch. All quality products of the Elgin National Watch Company. You can give or own nothing finer than an Elgin. The beautiful way to tell time. Down, Musgrove. Down, down boy. Get away. Get away. Absolutely Good morning, Mr. Silchester. I've laid the eggs, sir. I know. I just heard your cackle of triumph. <laughs> oh, sir. It's fine today, sir. Well, I shall be a better judge of that after I've tasted it. Oh, not the egg, sir. What, the, the egg is not fine, Alice? Oh, yes, sir. But you just said it. Oh, it's the weather that's fine, sir. Oh, you professor chaps, you're all alike full of big words. But when it comes to talking every day like with people, well, it's like you as foreigners. Alice, I spend the major portion of each year extolling the virtues of medieval poetry to a collection of teenage brigands whose appreciation of verse is largely confined to the extemporary efforts to be found on their dormitory walls. I came down here for the summer to avoid talking every day like, or any other way like, with people or anybody else. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Alice. Yes, sir. My honey, Alice. I've been here only three weeks, but surely in that time you must have realized that I always take a bit of honey with my breakfast. Yes, sir. Well, in that case, kindly fetch some. I'm um, uh, sorry, sir, you're all out of honey. Oh, but I must have my honey, Alice. Why, why didn't you go to Boddick and get some more? But I went to Mr. Boddick, sir, directly I saw your honey was getting low. Well, surely he didn't refuse your custom. Oh, no, sir. It's just these, uh, 
He's give up his bee, said he couldn't make him pay, he said. Oh, Alice. Kept dying off, he said. Yes, but Alice, I mean... Gone back to Hungerford, he asked, to his brother's father. Oh, just his brother's father. Yes. I mean, how am I expected to procure honey if every beekeeper in the neighbourhood goes out of business? It, it took a week searching to find Bodick. Well, lots try taking it up, sir, but it never seems to work round here. Except Mr. Hargrove, sir. He seems to make it pay. Well, then, then why didn't you approach Mr. Hargrove with my business? Mr. Oh, I didn't think you'd like to deal with him, sir. No. Funny sort of chap he is, him and his missus. Always keeping themselves to themselves. Never coming into town. Can't get friendly with them, no matter how you try. Yes, but Alice, and I mean, And many so. there are who've tried. Alice, my requirements are a fortnight's supply of honey. Not the establishment of friendship with a beekeeper. Kindly acquaint me with the whereabouts of Mr. Hargrove's farm, and I will go there this afternoon. Very good, sir. I'll write it down, sir. Oh, dear me, no, honey. Surely some future reward is due to me for all this suffering. The sign says, ring bell for honey. I'm a reading man myself. Huh? Oh, quite. Well, uh, uh, suiting the action to the word, I, uh, I rang. It doesn't always work. Huh? It's an old bell. No, oh, quite. Yeah, well, in, in, in the matter of honey... I have I... it in jars and combs. Well, I should require six combs and six jars. You have a taste for honey. Well, sufficiently developed to cause me to go to certain pains to acquire it. C can you let me have a like amount each fortnight? If my bees keep making it. Ah, yes. This part of the countryside is excessively hard on bees, I understand. I've no complaints. Oh, well, you're a fortunate man. Mm -hmm. You really think so? Mm -hmm. Wait here. Oh. You'll get your honey. Thank you. Gentlemen here want six of each. Shake a leg. Go go on, get it yourself. My wife. Oh, quite. Uh, that is to say, uh, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wish to startle you, sir, but might I have a word? Oh, I'm afraid I gave you a turn. Well, I was certainly quite unaware, sir, that I was being spied upon. Spied upon? Oh, you mean the grasses. Oh, disabuse yourself, my good sir, of any thought that you were the object of my scrutiny. Although I can see at a glance that you would repay closer inspection. Oh, would I indeed? Oh, I meant no offence, sir. One is naturally interested in humans who wander so far from their usual paths and habitats. Now, sir, what brings you to this unfamiliar section of Ashton Clearwater, when you obviously prefer to spend your time further south? Well, you, you know where I live, then. <laughs> I've not that honor, sir, but... But the clay that clings to your shoes and your stockings is definitely of the variety that is prevalent south of the village. <laughs> Bachelorhood has its advantages, sir. But in many respects, the ministrations of a housekeeper cannot take the place of those of a wife. Don't you agree? Well, well but what, what gives you the impression that I am a bachelor, sir? My hmm? dear sir, a devoted wife would never allow her spouse to wander forth in shoes so sadly in need of the brush. 
A housemaid is not nearly so conscientious. I see. I also see that your trousers... Uh, quite. We are both self-contained men who find the joys of the recluse far weightier than the disadvantages. Indeed, sir. We may find that we have much more in common where we to investigate. Huh? Then won't you join me, sir? I live just a little way down the road. I don't think you'll find the walk too much for you. And I can promise you a not too disagreeable tea upon the right. You wish me to accompany you, sir? For what purpose? The purpose of discussion, sir. I never discuss. Not even a subject which I have reason to believe is very close to your heart? Close to my heart? How can you possibly know what is close to my heart? The sir? subject is honey, sir, for which I believe you have an inordinate taste. Honey? And bees. I have no interest in bees. You have, I presume, an interest, mild though it may be, in preserving human life. Believe sir. me, sir, I would not dream of intruding upon your cherished privacy. Well, it's not a matter of such importance that once I have mentioned it to you, I feel sure you'll forgive my rudeness in speaking to you. Important, sir. One might almost say a matter of life and death. Upon my word, sir. I... Look here. Who are you? My name is Mycroft, if you will. Oh, I'm Sidney Silchester. How do you do? How do you do? This way, please. Yes, you, uh, you do research in bees, Mr. Mycroft? Oh, yes, indeed. Since my retirement from public life, I found it a singularly absorbing pastime. Oh, you at one time held some public position? A private position, sir. Which occasionally found its way to the public eye. Oh, now, sir. I'm sure you must have learned of the difficulties in acquiring honey in these parts. Oh, I have indeed, sir. You, you've no idea how delighted I am to have located Hargrove. Yes, bees evidently do not thrive around here. No, I, I can't think why. I can. Hmm? Uh, be so good as to step over here and view these two exhibits which I'm sure will arouse your interest. Well, it's, um, it's a dead bee. Quite. <laughs> I don't see what's over the end. Use but... this, please. Hmm. Now, what do you see? Well, my eyesight is excellent, Mr. Mycroft. I see the same bee I saw previously without the benefit of magnification. It's considerably larger now, but I, uh, I venture to suggest uh, <laughs> no deader. Your observation is unarguable, sir. I will now press gently with the tip of this forceps upon the stomach of the creature, thereby forcing the poor dead brute to extend its sting. Yes. Uh, this was one of my bees, Mr. Silchester. Oh, very touching. There. Yes? The sting, you see, is now extended. Well, I do this merely to acquaint you with the size and shape of a normal bee. Yes. Kindly continue to watch, sir, through the glass, while I perform the same operation upon this second dead bee. Another of yours, sir? I have not that honor. Oh. Ready? Yes. There. Good heavens! Quite a perceptible difference, eh? Upon my words of it, but, but that sting was three times the length of the first one. And three times the strength, sir. And charged with a venom of sufficient virulence to kill my dog in five minutes. Good heavens, sir, but, but, but whence came these killer bees? I am convinced, sir, that those are the bees, the product of whose labor you are presently carrying home to enjoy upon your breakfast day. What, Mr. Hargrove's bees? The one man, sir, who is able to thrive upon honey-making in this neighborhood. My own hives have been sadly depleted by the raids of his murderous bees. My own dog, as I told you, died not after half a dozen stings from those same monsters. Good heavens! Happily, I am possessed of a smoke device of my own invention, which temporarily routed the invaders. But they will be back for another chance, so make no mistake about that. Hargrove will not rest until he has put every beekeeper in this locality out of business. Oh, oh my words, excuse me. I... 
Well, I, I, I never heard of a man breeding a special kind of bee in order to decimate competition. My before. dear sir. Yes, but, but look, my dear sir, why, why on earth should you attempt to interest me in this matter? But surely, my good sir, it must be obvious to you that if I'm to move against this man, I must have help. But surely you don't propose to involve me. My first. good sir, how long do you think it'll be before the creator, this unbelievable instrument of death, will tire of wasting its staggering potential upon mere insects? Do you mean to intimate, sir, that... A man has bred a bee that destroys its fellows. Suddenly, he has discovered that his mutation is powerful enough to prove fatal to a good-sized dog. Think, my good sir, think! What will be his next move? His next experiment, if you will. Well, I, I think you're deranged, sir. I, mark I, I... my words, sir. Before very long has passed, the animal kingdom will cease to satisfy his evil ambitions. He will look elsewhere. Oh, well, I, I, I'm very much afraid, sir, that this matter seems to me, when placed in its proper perspective, to be merely a controversy between rival beekeepers. Not being a member of that happy breed, I, I fail to see wherein my services can be of use to you. Good, good day, sir, and thank you for a most diverting quarter of an hour. I... As you wish, sir. And I, in turn, hope that you enjoy your honey. Ramona, I hope you won't be late for tea. Ramona, the bread and butter will get stale. Good afternoon, Alice. Good afternoon. I have replenished my honey supply, and I beg you this time to give me ample notification of its imminent depletion. Did you, uh, did you go to the Hargrove, sir? I did, Alice, and I must compliment you on the reasonably accurate directions you gave me for locating the place. Now, if you'll just put this basket on did the shelf... Did you... I... Did you see Mrs. Hargrove when you would say her, sir? I did not, Alice, but I was subjected to the full range of her low tones. Then you must have been there just before. Before what? Before it happened. For heaven's sake, girl, be articulate. Before what happened? They're talking of nothing else in the town, sir, but of how suddenly poor dear Mrs. Hargrove, in the fullness of her strength, as you might say, sir, was struck down. Struck down? Dead, sir. Stone cold dead. Good heavens, how? But I, I was right there on the premises. I mean, if it was something infectious... Oh, it I... was the bee, sir. Without a word of warning, they turned on her. Stung her to death, they did, sir. In a matter of five minutes, she was gone. So cold, dead. <laughs> Your name? Thank you. Oh, gosh. Good morning, oh, Alice. My poor heart. Breakfast ready, I take it. Oh, what a shock he gave me. Ah, splendid. <coughs> it's fine today. I'm aware of that, Alice. The condition of the weather is fully as perceptible when observed through my bedroom windows as from the other portions of the premises. Now, what have we here? Alice! Yes, sir? Alice, as upon a certain melancholy past occasion, you have neglected to provide me with my morning allotment of honey. Yes, sir. Oh, you perceived the omission? Yes, sir. And you did nothing to rectify your dereliction? No, sir. Oh, well, thank you for your blunt answers. I shall now put a further question to you. Why not? The honey's gone, sir. Gone? There isn't a speck of it in the house. I see. Well, my next question has, perforce, a rather more pointed tone to it. Who, may I inquire, has been at it? Been at it, sir? Yes, Alice. Who has eaten my honey? Why, you have, of course, sir. Every bit of it. Alice, I must ask you to observe my face and manner very carefully. It may serve as an extremely useful lesson in patience and self-control. I do not fume, you will notice. I do not bluster. I do not stride about the room. You could not, no matter how carefully you examine me, detect the slightest trace of heightened coloration in my countenance. In fact, I am known around the faculty as Cool Silchester. 
Exactly. Are you observing me, Alice? Uh, yes, sir. About the Precisely, honey. Precisely, Alice. About the honey and tea. It is, it is about the honey that we are speaking. I should like to point out to you that my daily consumption of honey amounts to a very generous helping with my breakfast and a, a rather more modest portion with my tea. Now, only a very few days ago, days, I secured a full It was almost fortnight. three weeks, sir. What was? When you got the honey, sir. Tea? But th that's impossible. Oh, but I remember it well, sir, because it was the day poor dear Mrs. Hargroves died. You're perfectly right, Alice. It was almost three weeks ago. Yes, but that, that does not entirely absolve you from failing to replenish the supply. Oh, but you wouldn't want me to go to Mr. Hargroves, sir, not after what happened. But, my dear Alice, the coroner's jury was quite definite in finding Mr. Hargroves entirely free of any negligence in the unfortunate death of his wife. Look at the bees. The bees, Alice, as I understand it, were ordered destroyed by the court. I mean, naturally, one would hesitate at eating honey made by a hive of homicides. But Mr. Hargrove has procured fresh hives, I understand, and is now keeping completely docile and dependable creatures. Uh, am I not stating the truth, Alice? Maybe, sir, but I wouldn't go near Mr. Hargrove's nut for nothing. Oh, very well, Alice, so be it. But I see that I shall have to make my way once more to Mr. Hargrove's. You may clear, Alice. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good afternoon. Yes, I, um, I, I understood that you might once again be selling honey. Yes, sir. Yes, I gather that these are different bees from the ones which... Uh, put they are, sir. Oh, yes. I have a way with bees. Yes, sir, I am informed. Uh, are you? Hmm? By whom? Oh, that is, I, I mean, say, well, you're very fortunate. I mean, the That's majority of the beekeepers... a job. Ah, yes, of course, yes. Uh, Missy, you're...